Hey guys, how are you? I'm good and I hope everything is nice and well with you of course. So this is the third and last video on Koha data migration and backup restore methods. In last two videos we saw the process of mark import and SQL restoration through command line utilities and in this video we will look on the simplest and shortest method of database backup and restore using MySQL workbench utility which will let you handle everything with a few mouse clicks because it's a graphic user interface. So let's get going and uh, uh, let me show you my old system which is this. So I'll go to system settings and I'll show you that I'm using Ubuntu 16.04 LTS. Okay, so um, this is my old server where I have to extract data from. For this, I first need to install the MySQL Workbench utility. I'll go to terminal and type in this command sudo apt get install and when you press tab it will show you all the possibilities of programs with that name so i'll choose this mysql dash workbench okay so after typing in press enter it will ask you for a password because it's a system level uh, you know installation press yes or y to confirm okay it will take a few minutes to install everything because it will be fetching all the programs and all the files from the internet repository but for this video we can fast forward it because it's a recorded session okay great seems like we're done it has thrown no error so it means the command completed successfully and we can now launch the program so in the start menu or the app launcher as we call it in linux we can search mysql workbench here we will write just my and it will pop up and uh, once we open the program it has this default connection already built in which is created for the root user so once this uh, credential window appears, you can provide the root password. I'll uh, type in mine. Okay, let's save the password for now. Click OK. Uh, there's this connection warning. You can ignore it for now. Okay, so our connection has been established and it has presented us the database, which is here, Koha underscore library. And these are the options we have uh, to perform on this database. But for now, let me just show you how you can view uh, the tables inside this database. We'll expand this and here are our tables which are there in this database. And if I go to, let me, let me choose one like this. Uh, we'll choose this Biblo table and I'll select the first thousand rows uh, from this Biblo table. And here's the data which is, which is entered in this particular table of the database. All right and uh, here in this panel we have other options like we can see the server status we have these options for this particular instance how much load it is handling and how many connections are established we can we can refresh the connection we can also drop the connections and uh, here are the users and different privileges which are assigned to them uh, we can create anything we can delete anything okay now so let's come to the one which we are interested in which is this data export now here you can see we have only one database access which is koha underscore library so that one is listed here we can tick mark or choose this and here's the list of tables and we can skip anything by unticking it or we can select particular tables to export if we want but for now let's choose everything because we want the entire backup so we'll select all tables okay so everything is selected so let's go further here are some options to dump some events functions and triggers and then it gives us the option where to store this project uh, but because we want only single sql file in a single container so we'll choose this second option export to self-contained file and we'll uh, define a location where to save this file so i'll go to downloads folder and i name this file as koha underscore library which is the name of my database 
and underscore workbench to define that this backup was taken with workbench utility and underscore backup because this is a SQL file we'll check it from here and we'll save okay great so here's the full path to the location I'll choose this option to create single contained file only and let's click on export okay so the export started and finished with blink of an eye without any error so it means our data has been exported to the location which we defined let's open it go to downloads and here's the single sql file we can check it by going into its properties and it is of 148 mbs and there's another file which is compressed version which is of 7.2 mbs only okay anyway so this is how you can export data from mysql workbench utility with probably two or three clicks now let's go to the new server where we want to import this backup okay here we are on the new server and on this pc let me let me follow a different approach to install mysql workbench utility i'll go to google and uh, search for mysql workbench which will take me to the official website of oracle oracle or you know mysql because it is owned by Oracle. Okay, so once I'm on MySQL Workbench download page, I can click on this button which says download now. And uh, from this list, I can choose the appropriate operating system for which I'm downloading this program because I'm using Ubuntu Linux 16 bit version. So I'll choose this one. Here you can ignore these sign up and login things. So you can just click on uh, no thanks and it will just start the download straight away. And the file will be saved in the downloads folder which is default on all Mozilla browsers. Okay, so download has finished and let's close the browser for now. We'll go to downloads folder and here's our file. It is .deb file which is equivalent to exe files or executable files in Windows computer. And when we double click it, it will start the installer. Here it says it's a MySQL Workbench Utility and here's some description. Uh, let's click on install and it will ask for the authentication password. I'll provide mine. Okay and once I authenticate it will start installing the packages which we just downloaded from the internet. It will take a few minutes only. I mean the similar time which uh, you know command line utility takes. So both of these uh, methods do the same thing. Either you choose to download it from the internet and then install it, or you can install from the command line utility, but the program will run the same way. It's just a matter of your choice. Okay, great. So the application is installed. We can uh, close this installer for now. And let's go to app launcher and find where the program is here it is mysql workbench and again we have this uh, default connection which is set up for uh, the root user and uh, these are the default you know parameters which are assigned to it we can test it for now let's provide the root password okay uh, this is just a version mismatch error I think because the program version and the database engine version is different. We can ignore it for now. Let's continue and the connection established successfully. It means we can access the database from this utility now. Continue. Okay, we are in and uh, here's the interface as we saw on the old server. We can see the server status from here and uh, uh, let me show you the uh, connection there are connections these are the users which we have in this system and then we have the dashboard from where we can see everything which is running on the system in one screen but we don't have any database on this server as of now so let's click here and create a new schema database or schema both are uh, you know same thing uh, let's name it koha underscore library which is same as it was in the old system and uh, we'll keep all these settings on default and click on apply it's just a query which will be executed in the background so you can just click next and close all right so our blank database has been created we have uh, this structure but we don't have any tables or any data stored in it so it's time to import our data which we copied from the old server into this blank database 
so i'll go to import tab and choose this option import self-contained file i'll uh, provide the location where the file is saved which is in the doc documents folder okay so here's the sql file which we need to import and uh, we can choose the target schema or the target database in which this data will be ingested so we'll choose co underscore library we'll dump everything structure and the data as well and start the import it takes similar amount of time as the command line utility but uh, it is simple so that's why people love it we can relax for a while while the system is working for us okay great so the import has finished and it completed successfully uh, without any error it means the entire data is ingested into the new database and from the dashboard we can see the, the system was busy doing its thing anyway so uh, we can go to the schemas and explore the tables let's go to biblo table and see the first thousand entries here they are okay great so we have everything here and now there's only one thing left we need to upgrade the database schema for koha because as in the last video i told you with every consecutive update of any open source or any any software uh, there are some changes in the database or in the tables or in the fields which are made by developer so in order to make the database at par with the latest version we need to run this command sudo koha upgrade schema and then name of the instance which is uh, library in our case this command will wipe out the old and obsolete table fields from the database uh, which are not required by this version of koha which is installed on this uh, server but for more details you can check out my previous video a link to which is appearing on the right top corner now take some time but it is worth it so let's wait good so you can see the database is upgraded from 19.12 to 20.05 now there's one thing we need to do and we must do is uh, rerun the zebra indexes zebra is the search engine as i told you in the last video so we want zebra to re-index the entries which are newly made in the database for that we'll run this command sudo koha rebuild zebra f switch for the full bibliographic mode and v switch for verbose and the name of the instance of course this will go through each and every entry and in create a new index for all the searchable keywords so whenever a user performs a search it gives precise and faster results without any noise or anything you know unwanted Okay guys, so now that we have finished everything nice and clean, we can finally open the Koha interface through the web browser. So let's open localhost and go to the opaque screen. Okay, so we are in. So in the search bar, let's type in a uh, name of any book like Bibliography of the British Period. By this keyword, let's see how many books appear and we have a populated catalog which has uh, all the healthy records everything is entered correctly into the appropriate fields let's go to the admin screen and uh, let's see if everything is fine in the administration window let me just quickly log in with my credentials okay click on login Okay, so here we are in the staff interface let's perform another catalog search with the different keyword let's say this time we'll type British and search how many books we have in the catalog with that keyword 
okay we have that old book which we just searched in the opac and uh, we have these new and uh, yeah we have everything nice and clean uh, all the entries are populated all the fields are correct and uh, in the about page we can see the version information we are running koha 20.05 and all the pearl dependencies and uh, you know other things are correctly configured as they were in the previous system so that's it guys this is how you can migrate koha database from one server to the another in three different ways i hope this has been helpful for you uh, please watch my previous videos on the same topic as well if there's any query or there's any suggestion you can post a comment below or write me an email your likes and your dislikes will be much appreciated and please make sure you subscribe the channel because i'll be posting more videos on open source stuff in the future so thank you guys thank you for watching take care now bye bye then